from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco, California at Moscone West. I'm John Furrier, co-host of theCUBE with my analyst this week, co-host John Troyer, co-founder of Tech Reckoning. Our next guest is Dave Abrams, Executive General Manager of Data at Insurance Australia Group. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me, We guys. were just you know, talking on, off camera before we came on about the challenges of data, cloud scale. You guys have been around for many, many years. Yeah. Um, you're dealing with a lot of legacy. Yeah, you got absolutely. the cloud right on the front step. What's going on with Correct. you? Take a minute to explain what you guys do, yeah, your role, sure. and your environment. Absolutely, no, it's, uh, you know, so we're, we're a large insurer in Australia, and we, we've got uh, offices uh, in New Zealand and across Southeast Asia, so we're kind of uh, expanding out in our, in our reach. But um, we've been around for 100 odd years, and, and we've really grown uh, a lot through merger and acquisition uh, over time. And so what that's meant, uh, just as a bit of a byproduct of, of, uh, of those kind of merger and acquisition uh, process is that data's been siloed and fragmented in different brands and different products. And so it's been hard to get, uh, for example, just a holistic view of a customer. What, what does a customer have, all the products they hold? You know, are they, are they a personal customer as well as a business customer? All that sort of stuff doesn't kind of line up. Um, so we've had that big challenge and we've been working over the last couple of years to even just kind of consolidate all that, unify uh, that data into one platform so that we can see across the group from a, from a holistic perspective and, and build that single view of customer. And that's now helped us sort of understand you know, what our customers are doing and, and what's important to them and how we can better support them and, and, uh, you know, and offer better services. And what are you doing here at Red Hat this week? What's, uh, what's the objective? What are you doing? What are you, yeah. you know, speaking? Are you talking to folks? What's the, what's the solution with Red Hat? Well, so yeah, we're, we're primarily here uh, as a result of the Innovation Awards. So we, we, you know, we were nominated and we're successful in our, in our award for, for that category in our region, which is wonderful and we, we're really honored with that. Um, so we're here because of that. We're here sharing our customer story with uh, the rest of the Red Hat team and the rest of the open source community around really what it's meant for us to use open source within a, a big corporate that's kind of traditionally been based uh, on, on a lot of vendor technology, right? We've, we've been driven uh, predominantly by the, the big tech vendors the, you know, that have come in and sort of helped us build um, big solutions and platforms, which, which were great and, and wonderful in the fact that you know, they, they were there and they lasted like 10 years plus, uh, and, and that was all good, but now because things are changing so fast, we need to be more adaptable and, and unfortunately, those platforms become so entrenched into the organization and, and, and sort of lock you in that to, to adjust and to, to be adaptable, you can't, you can't take it out very easily. It doesn't even stack up sometimes from a business case to say, why, why would we take that technology out? We'll just have to dig deeper and we'll just have to spend more, right? So we're trying to, we're trying to re, uh, reverse engineer some of that. And the role open source for you guys has been part of new systems, recruiting, talent, yeah, everything. Correct. What's, the, what's been the benefit, the impact of open Absolutely, source? Absolutely, it's huge. And, and you're right, I think one of the biggest benefits for us that, that really plays out is, the, is in the talent side, right? For our people to say, um, not only are we transitioning our organization, as a whole and, and the, way we, the way we operate, but we're really transitioning our people. We're transitioning from kind of the workforce that we, that we had and that got us to where we are today, but we're now setting ourselves up for the workforce of the future. And it is a different skill set. It is a different way of approaching problems. So, um, you know, bringing, bringing this new technology to the table and allowing people to experiment, to learn, and to, to update their skills and capabilities is exactly what we, what we need for our company. So we're pushing that hard. Which Dave, is uh, yeah, that's great. It's a real cultural shift. Mm. Can we uh, maybe transfer, uh, transfer over a little bit to the, the actual tech problem you had, right? Sure. So you, multiple countries, multiple data warehouses, multiple systems. You, yeah. So what were you looking at and then what was the solution that you kind of uh, figured out and uh, then went and executed? Yeah, when, uh, so when I first started in the role a couple of years back, we had something like 23 different separate individual data warehouses that were all sort of interconnected and dependent on each other and had copies of each other in each other and it was just, it was, it was a little bit of a mess. So, so the first challenge was to really sort of uh, rationalize and clean up a lot of that. So, so that's, that's what we spent a fair bit of time up front doing, which was basically reacquiring the organization's data from a, a, a massive amount of core source systems so in the vicinity of, I think we take uh, data from roughly about 150 to 200 uh, core systems. And we want to take that data uh, essentially in as close to real time as we possibly can 
uh, and pump that into a, into, a, into a new, clean, unified data lake, right? Just to make that data all line up. So that was the big challenge uh, in the first instance. And then the second instance was really um, a scale problem, right? So getting the right technology that would help us scale into, uh, you know, because we, we've predominantly been using our own um, data centers and keeping a lot of stuff, uh, you know, in that sort of on-prem mode, but we really wanted to be able to give ourselves scale to not only be able to, uh, you know, take advantage of um, cloud uh, infrastructure just to give us that extra compute and that extra storage and, and processing, but really also um, to be able to leverage the, the, the commoditization that's happening in cloud, right? Because, um, you know, all, all cloud companies around the world are commoditizing technology like machine learning and, you know, artificial intelligence so that it's, it's, it's available to lots of organizations. And the way we see it is really that, that we're not going to be able to compete or out-engineer those, those companies. So we need to make it, um, you know, accessible and available for our people to be able to use and leverage that innovation uh, on our work as well as, as you know, do some, some smart stuff ourselves. So. so using infrastructure as a service, OpenStack, or what's your yeah. solution? I mean, what are you guys doing? Solution is, uh, yeah, to use OpenStack as, as our first uh, sort of real um, step into uh, infrastructure as a service. So that's really helped us set up, uh, like I was sharing this morning, set up the capability for us to, to now scale uh, in a really cost efficient way. And we've ported a lot of our traditional um, dedicated uh, you know, uh, applications on infrastructure that, that you know, was like um, uh, appliance based and things like that onto OpenStack now so that we can, it gives us a lot more portability and we can move that around and put that in the place where we think uh, gets us the best value. So, so that's really helped. I'm kind of curious, you, you worked with uh, Red Hat Consulting and was, how was, I was curious about that process. Yeah. Did you, was that the result of a kind of a bake off or were you already Red Hat customers and said, oh hey, by the way, can you give us some advice? Yeah. Uh, it really came about, I mean, we've, we've been working with Red Hat for many years, you know, and it started back just uh, sort of in the support area of, of uh, Linux and, and RHEL and using that kind of capability. And Red Hat's been there for us for quite a long time now. Um, and I think we've sort of done some, um, some explore, exploratory type uh, exercise with them around, you know, OpenShift and, and the container world. But, um, but what really started to stick was just getting their expertise in from an OpenStack perspective, and we knew that was a key platform that we really wanted to, to dive into and enable, and so having them there as our partner and helping us provide that extra consulting uh, knowledge and expertise was, was what we really needed and helped us deliver on that project. And we delivered in an amazingly uh, tight time frame, so it was a, so it was a great was faster, outcome. Fast delivery. Fast delivery, what about, exactly. business, what about the business impact? A lot of people look at OpenStack and, and some of these new technologies, and yeah. certainly with the legacy stuff going on you have, yeah. you got all these things everywhere. What was the actual business benefits? Can you highlight, like, did you get like, faster time to market? Was it like a, cl yeah. a claims issue? I mean, what were the key things that you look back and saying, wow, we kicked ass and we did these three things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, really what it boils down to is faster time to market, right? And just the ability to move quicker. So, to give you an example, uh, the way uh, we used to work is that it would take you, say, probably weeks, maybe even longer, to, to provision and get uh, infrastructure stood up and ready to go for different projects. So it meant that there was all this lead time that projects needed to go through even before they could start to write code and even start to add value to, to customers. So um, we wanted to sort of take that away and, 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 and then that, was a, that was a big hindrance to, to be able to experiment and to be able to play with things. So again, we want to say, take that out of the picture and, and really free people up to sort of say, well, the infrastructure's done and it spins up in a matter of seconds now uh, on OpenStack and you can get on with the job of trying something out, experimenting and actually delivering and writing code that will, that will produce an outcome so for our customers. you guys launch new applications? What was the specific outcome that came from standing up, putting that OpenStack together? I see you experimenting. So yeah, what was well, the result of that? More not apps only, or? Yeah, not, not only in the app space, but more so the biggest, the biggest um, sort of benefit we've got is really in the data space, where we've now been able to essentially stand up our entire data stack using open source technology, um, and, and we've never been able to do that before. And this is, you know, this, this, is, this is the environment that's allowed us to do that by just um, allowing for us to do that test and trial and say, you know, is, is Kafka going to be the right tool for us? Is it, you know, is it gonna, are we going to use Postgres? Whatever that is, um, it's allowed us to sort of really do that in a rapid way and then figure that thing out and start to move forward, so. You got a lot of scar tissue, you guys have done a lot of work out there. Yeah. Uh, so good work, so I got to ask you the question, with Kubernetes, containers, uh, now yeah. part of the discussion as a real viable way to handle legacy, but also yeah. new, software development projects. Correct. How do you look at that? What, what's, what's the uh, 
uh, um, your, your reaction to that as a practitioner? Yeah. Are you guys excited? Yeah, yeah. Things in motion, what's your, what's your color Absolutely. on that? Absolutely, it's in fact, it's been something that we've kind of had on the radar for quite a while because we've, we've, we've been working with containers, so Dock in particular, and, uh, and, and one of the things that you, know, you come across is just management of containers and just the ongoing maintenance of, of those kind of things where they start to get a little bit unwieldy, a little bit out of control. So, um, you know, we, we've been trying to, we try to start, we started off trying to uh, build our own, you know, own solution to that as, as a lot of corporates uh, do and quickly found out that's, that's, a, that's a huge engineering challenge. So uh, things like Kubernetes that have now come along and the investment that's been put into that platform uh, will really open up that avenue for us. And uh, even seeing just the, the, the new innovation that's been put into OpenShift here that sort of takes a lot of that uh, management and service you know, administration out of, the, out of the equation for you is, is wonderful for a company like us. Because at the end of the day, we're an insurance company, right? We're not a, we're not a technology engineering company. While, although we have some capability, it's never going to be our, our strength, right? We're really here to, to service our customers and, and to help them um, in the times when they need our help. For, but you for guys are a data company. Data is critical for correct. you. I mean, you're data driven. Yeah. How will you, how has you, how you become more data driven as a result of all this? Yeah, so, so uh, now that we've got our data all in one place and we're able to get those single views of customers, we're able to put that data now into the, the hands of people that can really uh, add value to it. So for example, into our analytics teams and get them to look for optimization uh, in price or in service, claims processing, all those kind of good things that, that are helping our customers reduce the, the, the time frames that they would normally go through in that part of that experience. Um, and I think uh, one of the other things is not only that, but also enrich our digital ca capability, right? And enrich that digital channel. So make it more convenient for customers. You know, we, it used to be that customers would come along and it's literally like coming to the organization for the first time every time, you know? We say, <laughs> fill in that form again from blank. You're like, we don't know anything about you, but now we're able to enrich painful. that form. Exactly, it's very painful. Ask you, your name and, you know, you want to insure your house, tell us all about that house. You know, what is it made of? you know, what, what type of roof material, what's the wall? We know all that, we've probably seen that house 10 times already, so why wouldn't we just be able to pre-populate that kind of information and, and make it more convenient for customers? Personalization becomes critical. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That's great. That's Although I, I like the way you underscored and told the story, uh, just like with cloud, you just can't take your broken old IT apps and just throw them up in the cloud. You had to, you had to do a data exercise and, and you had to do a consolidation and a cleaning. That's right. And sure, that involved open source, but you didn't pick yeah. the tech stack first. First you have to fix your, fix your data app. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and that was a key part here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That took a lot of effort. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that I think uh, we really, we really invested in it was, because a lot of the time uh, what we've seen is organizations have sort of attacked um, the, the low hanging fruit, like the, the, the kind of the external, the digital data that they might be able to um, get, but not that offline data that's been, you know, won and, and, and generated by the branch and the call centers and all those kind of areas. And, and we dug in deep and invested in that space and got that right first, which really helped us a lot to accelerate and now, where I think we're in a better position and we can definitely take advantage of that. Dave, thanks for sharing your insights here on theCUBE. I got to ask you a final question. Yeah, is sure. For the folks watching that are looking at you and say, wow, this guy, he got down and dirty, fixed some things, he's going forward, innovative. What advice would you give someone watching as another practitioner? What have you learned? What's the learnings that, you've, that have been magnified out of this process for you and your view going forward? Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of <laughs> learnings we can share, but I think uh, some of the key ones is, you know, I think um, there's, there's sometimes a bit of a, bit of a sort of um, attempt to try and solve everything yourself, right? And, and we definitely did that, right? Try and build it all yourself and, and do everything right, but it's, it's, it's a challenge. And, and use partners and, and look for, look for um, you know, things that are kind of going to help you accelerate and, and give you some of the foundational work that you don't have to build yourself, right? You don't have to build everything yourself. And I think that acknowledgement is really key. So that was one of the big things for us. Um, the other thing is, you know, just, just investing early and getting things right up front, like pulling your data and consolidating it into, into a single platform, even though that takes a lot of time and, and, it's, and it's quite challenging to sort of go back and redo things, that's actually a, a huge investment and a big win to, to really help you accelerate at the end. That investment up front does, does pay off, so. Awesome, well congratulations on your Innovation Award. Thank you. On stage, Dave Averson, General Manager at uh, IAI, IAG <laughs> Insurance Australia Group here inside the Cube, sharing the best practices. It's it's a world you got to do the homework up front. Open source is the way. It's an it's an operating model for innovation. It's the Cube bringing you all the action here on day two of coverage. Stay with us for more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>